Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. Today we're going to talk about dynamic electricity, which is essentially the electricity that we use into our houses and the various devices that we um, have in our lives. So, first of all, what is dynamic electricity? I kind of touched upon it now. It's the orderly flow of negative charges, in other words, electrons, in a circuit. Okay, so we know that uh, electrons, let me just grab a pen here. So we know that electrons obviously are negative, so they will originate from the negative end of the circuit and they will be attracted to the positive end. Okay, so in a circuit, there's always two poles or two electrodes. The problem is, like with most most sorry things in life, um, we make assumptions or we work with a certain standard that gets established when we don't necessarily have all the information in hand. So conventional current actually works the opposite way. So it was decided a long time ago before we had all this knowledge about electrons that current, which we um, call I, so the letter that represents current is the letter I. So current would flow from positive to negative. Okay, so when you look at um, circuits, uh, we'll always talk about conventional current, letter I, and current always flows from positive to negative. Okay, so that's the conventional way of talking about current. But we have to keep in mind that current is really a flow of electrons and actually electrons go in the opposite direction, right? From negative to positive, that would be the electron flow. But again, normally when we look at circuits, we're going to be looking at this um, type of standard. So current goes from positive to negative. Okay, before we talk about circuits, we need to look at uh, various symbols because we have to be able to recognize what they mean. So the first symbol, the most important one, is the power source. Without a power source, you don't have any current. So a power source will look somewhat like this. Um, if it's drawn by hand, it could look like this or like this, for example. And the difference between the two is that, as you will see here, there's one positive, one negative electrode. Here, there are two. So if you have, let's say, two batteries back to back, if you have a generator, if you have a bigger power source, you might have something that looks, looks more like this. If you have one single battery, it could be uh, like this. The longer line, so this one here, for example, um, is always the positive end, and this this is uh, drawn as a thicker line. Uh, I, t in my opinion, we don't see this very often, but the smaller one, however, is the negative end. Then you might come across a voltmeter, so that measures voltage. We'll talk about uh, all these measurements down the road. So a voltmeter is a circle with a V in it. An ammeter, which measures how strong the current is, is an A in a circle. Uh, a light bulb will look somewhat like this. Uh, you might see a symbol that looks like this, or an X, or more like an E letter with a circle around it. So there's various symbols that represent a light bulb. Then we, we might have a resistor. It says it. It's a little device that resists the current. So again, we're going to talk about that down the road, but just in a nutshell, it might be used to create light or heat. And then we'll have uh, switches. Uh, these are two examples. So we'll have what we call a push button. So it's like an on off button like you would have on a cell phone, for example, or a flicker switch, right? A, a, a switch that you toggle up, a toggle switch, a toggle up and down like you might have on the wall um, at home in order to turn on and off the light. Okay, so these are symbols for switches. So we have two uh, situations with circuits. A circuit can be opened. In other words, there's an opening in it, or it could be closed. Okay, if I look at this one at the bottom here, there's no opening in it. It's complete. Now, if there is an opening in it, the current cannot complete the loop. If the current cannot complete the loop, then it cannot flow. So your light bulb, for example, over here would not get lit. Okay, so when we say open the light, 
actually we're not opening the circuit, we are closing the circuit. So it's a little bit counterintuitive or we're misusing the concept of opening something, opening the light. Uh, we should say turn on the light. So if we close the circuit, then the loop is complete. So if the loop is complete, the electricity can flow. Again, it flows from positive to negative, right? That's the convention. Convention, sorry. So the current will flow in this direction, will power the light bulb. So the light bulb goes on and continues its journey. Here, the switch has completed the circuit. So the circuit is closed and the current can go back to its original, uh, to, the, to its start, starting point. Okay, so if the loop is complete, electricity can flow. We call this a closed circuit. If there's a gap in it, like here, we call this an open circuit and electricity cannot flow. Now, there are two types of circuits that we're going to be looking at. The first one is a circuit in series. Something that's in series is consecutive, right? So the, the items are one after the other. So in other words, there's only one pathway. Everything is connected end to end in one pathway. And if one of the components breaks down, let's say the light bulbs breaks, well, that opens the circuit. There's going to be a gap in here. The electricity cannot flow anymore and the circuit doesn't work. So here we have the power source with the positive end. The current will flow in this direction, go through an ammeter, in my example, go through a resistor, go through a light bulb, go through another resistor, and come back to the power source. Now here we have a voltmeter, which is kind of connected outside of the circuit. I will say outside, it's connected on either end of the light bulb. The reason is, it wants to measure the voltage before and after the current goes through the light bulb. So it has to be connected to both ends, but it's not in a sense directly part of the circuit, of the loop itself. Now, if we look at in reality what the circuit would look like, I would have my power source here. So my two batteries, because I have two batteries here, two power sources back to back. Then I have my ammeter right over here. Then my current goes through a resistor, which is over here. Then my current goes through a light bulb and followed by resistor. So light bulb and resistor, and then goes back to the power source, right? It goes back to the power source. And we have the voltmeter over here across the light bulb. So this is what I have here. And you'll say, well, why are you crossing your lines here? Because when in reality we connect those items together, current goes from positive to negative, basically. It loops back around. And on these devices, very often, not only you can't see here, it's too small, but it says plus over here and it says negative over here. But on top of that, if this is not labeled, it's also color coded. Normally the positive uh, end will be red and the negative one, the negative electrode will be black. It's not that it changes anything per se. They could both be black. It wouldn't change nothing to the fact that the electricity can flow through the item, through the device. It's just to help us connect things in the correct order because if you connect them backwards, then your circuit won't work and you chance short circuiting actually your little device over here. You're going to burn it essentially. Okay, so they color code um, these devices to help us connect them in the correct order. So that's why here my lines are crossing because the electricity is coming from this side and it needs to enter my voltmeter from one of the red um, components, electrodes, and then the electricity will leave the voltmeter through the black electrode and go back to the light bulb, okay, and continue its journey. So that's for a series circuit. There's only one pathway. Now, you could have something called a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, it's a little bit like a highway. On a highway, you have, let's say, three lanes. You cannot drive through all three at the same time. You have to pick one. So a parallel circuit works the same way. There's different lanes for the electricity, and the electricity has to choose one or the other or the other. So you have different branches, right? And wherever 
Um, okay, so let me let me take a look at this. So we have the power source. So the electricity could flow through this pathway, the red one, and come back to the power source. Or it could go down here and use the blue road and come back to the power source. Or it could have gone here and gone down through the green path and come back to the power source. So it's a little bit as if there's only one lane at the beginning and then the highway splits into three lanes and then your lanes all come back together and there's only one lane at the end. Okay, so, but it splits, right? It gives the electricity the opportunity to go through this section or this section or this section. So this section over here is called in parallel. And wherever the electricity splits or gets back together, merges, we call these nodes. Okay, so those are nodes. So there more than, there's more than one branch to this circuit. Where the circuit divides or merges, we call them nodes. And the advantage of this kind of circuit is that if, let's say, my light bulb uh, burns out. So let's say this starts, uh, stops, I should say, functioning, well, the electricity can still go through these parts. So the whole circuit doesn't open, only this section opens. So this section doesn't work anymore, but the other two can work. The only time you'd have a problem is if your circuit opens up in the common sections over here. But if the parallel section, if one of the branches breaks, it doesn't matter. That section will stop functioning, but the others are still functional. So that's the advantage of a parallel circuit. You have less problems with them. Um, if you've ever come across an old style Christmas tree um, with uh, the, the, the light bulbs, when one light bulb used to burn, the whole Christmas tree would uh, go dark. And then you'd have to try and figure out which light bulb had burned. Now, the, the, the modern ones uh, work with parallel circuits. So if a light bulb burns, that light bulb will stop functioning, but the other light bulbs can stay lit. It's not a problem anymore. Okay, so that's the advantage of a parallel circuit. Even if a component breaks, the whole circuit doesn't stop functioning. Only that one com component stops functioning. Now, what does this look like in reality if we uh, connect the, the, the real items together? So this is what it is. So I've recopied my diagram here. I have the power source. Let me just use uh, the select item, it's better. So I have the power source. So my power source is here. I have my first loop, right? Which I color coded in red. So first resistor, ammeter comes back to the power source. Or before the first resistor, there's a, a node. So the current could go through the blue loop and come back. So you have the same thing here. So be, right before the first resistor, there's another pathway, which is in blue over here and goes back to the power source. Or I could have had the electricity go through here before the first resistor, it comes down to the light bulb to which is attached a voltmeter and come back past the ammeter and go through this ammeter before going to the power source. So if we start from here, before the first resistor, it goes down through the green uh, path, goes through the light bulb to which is attached the voltmeter, goes back here and goes through the second ammeter, which is common to all pathways and goes back to the power source. Okay, so this is what it would look like if you had a diagram like this. Now, it might look very complex. Um, most likely, you will have some uh, practical work done in class. Uh, your teacher will probably organize a lab, an electricity lab, and you'll get to connect items like this. There's various ways of doing it. This is one way. It looks a little bit more like a spaghetti, I like to call it, just because there's wires everywhere and it's not very structured. There are other ways of going about it, which your teacher will probably show you in time. Okay, so but it was just to illustrate what the diagram would translate into uh, real life. So it could look like this. And as I explained before, if there is a part that breaks, so let's say uh, this wire would stop working. Well, the electricity cannot flow through the light bulb anymore, but it can still flow through the first resistor 
and through the second resistor and make its way back to the power source. Okay, so if a component breaks within the parallel section, the other sections of the parallel part uh, are not affected. So that's the beauty of it. Okay. Lastly, there are two types of currents that we use in our uh, homes and devices and industries. So the first one is direct. So it says it, right? Direct current. It's direct. It's one direction. So the electrons only move in one direction. And alternating current um, means that the electrons can move back and forth. So they'll start going in one direction and they'll come back. So they keep on, they keep on oscillating back and forth. Okay. And so when you think of a small device, uh, a remote control, uh, a TV, a uh, cell phone and whatnot, that will use uh, direct current. But the house itself, for example, would be uh, powered by alternating current. So sometimes uh, our devices have components in them that convert um, direct, uh, sorry, alternating current into direct current. And uh, you might have heard the acronyms, actually. Direct current, we label it as DC. And alternating current, we label it as AC. And some of you might say, oh, this sounds like the Australian band, ACDC. Well, that's exactly where their name came from, from alternating current and direct current. Now, how cool is that? Well, on that note, that's the end of our lesson. If you have questions, you know what to do. Otherwise, I'll see you around for your next lesson. Sorry. And until then, take care.